up there. Hello, this is Phil Chenever, the LibriVox video guy, talking to you about Audacity Noise Removal. What are those new slider thingy wingy mabobs? Okay, this here in front of you is an audio track. When we record, our microphones pick up not only our lovely and mellifluous voices, but also all the other stuff that happens in the room, like mouth clicks, chair creaks, dog scratching, burps, etc. All of the things that have to be edited out individually. But the kind of noise that is constant, such as hiss, hums, computer fans, and the like, can be essentially removed using the special noise removal tool. Now this is an example of a track with a constant background hum. Watch this, or listen to this. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, yes, to volunteer, that's what I said. Please contact LibriVox.org. Now you hear that hum in the background? That actually is a 60 cycle hum, or 60 hertz, or 60 frequency. I'll explain that a little bit more in a while. In fact, let's explain that now. I'm going to zoom in and show you. This is a cycle. From here to here. Um, one cycle. It starts here, it goes down, and then crosses the zero. The, 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 by the, this black line in the middle is zero, meaning it's silence. And it goes up the high, comes back down, and so it's a cycle. There are 60 of these in every second. Hence, the incredible term, 60 cycles, or 60 hertz, pardon me. That's the current term. I think it's named after Alexander Graham Hertz. No, that can't be right. Okay, now I zoomed in on that showed you a full cycle. I'm going to zoom out. Now remember that a negative decibel number means the sound is getting quieter. 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 I'm just manipulating my magic thing here. So let's use noise removal to get rid of that hum. Let's listen to it again. Yes, to volunteer. That's what I said. Please contact LibriVox.org. And you can see that's a loud signal. So effect, noise removal. Now there is some, um, the first step is not a slider. It's called step one. It's called get no noise profile. It's a decision. You have to choose what you want to use. Now, I'm going to come back to my, uh, cancel that. I'm going to choose this part. Let's see. This looks pretty good. This is going to be my, quote, um, noise. Good. I've chosen that. Uh, you must give Audacity a noise profile or a sample of the noise. This means you pick a piece where there's no speaking to give it an example of the type of background noise you want to remove. Now, I'm not speaking here, so I picked this thing. Normally it would be like this over here. I should point out that this section is my actual background ambient noise of this room without that added 60 cycle hum. Okay, so I'm going to pick this, say get noise profile, good. Now it knows what the frequency and the volume of what I consider silence. This is going to be called the noise floor, another technical term. Audacity will use this sample to separate whatever part of the track I pick, let's say this part here. It will separate that into noise and non-noise so that when the volume of the track is less than the noise floor, it will reduce the volume depending on what I pick or you pick in the next step. When the volume is greater than the noise floor, the program lets everything through because it assumes that this is your voice and not to be tampered with. Now for this, this example, let's assume the noise is about negative 30 decibels. Let's hope that it will never be that loud in your recordings, but we're just going to assume that because this actually is about negative 30. Um, now, I'm going to go up here again and go noise removal. 
Now these slider bars are what this video is about, so I'm going to talk about them for a second. The negative, the noise reduction slider bar, surprise, surprise, this is where you choose how many decibels you want to reduce the noise. For example, right now it's set on 20, which means it will drop it by 20 decibels. Make it 20 decibels quieter. Now, for example, let's assume that your noise profile is, is mainly the 60 cycle hum, and the loudness picks up, picked up by your microphone is at 30 decibels, um, which is a lot. If you want, to, if you put your slider here on 20, that would reduce your noise to a negative 50. So it's negative 30 and a negative 20 make negative 50. So let's do that. No, no, let's uh, preview that. I'm going to listen to it. Please contact LibriVox.org. Now I can still hear that. I can still hear it. Um, ne okay. Next, we're going to come to the sensitivity slider bar. Da -da -da -da. This new adjustment here allows you to raise or lower the noise floor that was set in step one. And now, in our example of a 60 cycle hum at negative 30 decibel, right here, I, I actually, yeah, right there, um, Audacity looks for any part of the track any part of this whole track that is silent. Now in this case the definition we gave it was a negative 30 decibels. That's the noise floor. Now only on these silent parts does it apply the amount of noise reduction you choose, you chose, or choose. Anything louder than negative 30 is just ignored or left alone. But sometimes it is helpful to raise the noise floor so that moving the sensitivity slider Let's say 2 plus 10. That's close enough. The 2, 2 plus 10 would tell Audacity to apply noise reduction to any piece of track that is negative 20 decibels or less. Setting this slider to higher values means that more sound will be considered noise and thus filtered out by the noise removal effect. Setting in lower values, if you want to you're reducing that um, noise floor means that less sound, uh, fewer sounds will be considered noise and filtered out. Um, both sensitivity, sen both sensitivity and reduction sliders control how much your audio will be filtered, but in different ways. The reduction slider controls how much, and the sensitivity slider. Um, uh, controls what will be filtered. I'm going to move this back to zero. It's best to start out at zero there, folks. I uh, can't find it, but it's somewhere up in there. Pick up here with frequency smoothing. Frequency smoothing, this slider bar, increases the frequencies that are considered noise. Now, in our example of a 60 cycle hum, if you move this all the way on slider to 40, or wherever 40 is, there you go, 40, then the frequencies between 20 and 60, in other words, 40 on either side of 60, would be considered noise. If you move it all the way down to zero, then just that exact 60 cycle or 60 hertz would be reduced. Now, if your noise is a single frequency, such as uh, a mains hum or a high-pitch high whistle, then you want to keep this small. If your noise is more like a hiss, then a larger value will generally be better. Attack decay. Well, I for one don't want to decay, but that's not what this slider means. How quickly the noise removal reacts. When Audacity arrives, it's, it's looking at our track, and it arrives at a silent part, it leaps into effect to reduce that silent part, to reduce your noise. Now how quickly it does this is determined by this attack and decay time. So when Audacity arrives at a solid part of the track, it applies noise reduction, and when it reaches a part with sound, like for example up in here, um, it stops. Sometimes you might want to smooth this transition, and this slider allows you to delay the start and stop times to make it sound smoother. And you can see it's, it's, it's rather small here. 
Uh, using a larger value, use a larger value if the background noise is pretty constant. Use a smaller value if it varies rapidly. Now it's suggested that you start with these two smoothing. These are the two smoothings in the middle. And these first two much closer to zero so you see what's going on. Of course, this, this one would be a zero, would be right in the middle. So if you start off with these three in the middle, this one as far over as, as you can get it. The best setting for noise filter is one in which most of the noise is filtered with minimum hurt to the audio. That means with reduction and sensitivity sliders, these two as close to zero, well, as close to zero as possible. Um, if there is still noise with this, then you can try increasing the value of, of the sensitivity or the reduction um, and until you get to the point where you like it. And remember, you could listen to preview all the time and see how it sounds. Generally, when you increase one, you can reduce the other one. If you increase this one, you can reduce that one a little bit. If the sound gets distorted, try to increase the smoothness um, or the attack decay time. So that's it. <clears throat> I've hopefully, hopefully explained what these sliders are. Uh, the noise reduction is how many decibels you want to reduce. <clears throat> pardon me, your noise. Sensitivity it allows you to raise or lower your noise floor. Personally, I think leaving it as zero is going to be just about right for me. Frequency smoothing increases the frequencies that are considered noise. And attack decay time is another smoothing thing to how fast the noise reduction um, hits, starts, and stops. That's it. I hope that uh, this is elucidating a little bit. It took me a long time to figure all this out. And if I'm wrong, please don't hesitate to let me know. This is Phil Chenever wishing you many happy hours of recording. And uh, there's lots more books out there. Thank you. Bye-bye.